Try this out. It'll lock your fingers in front of you this time. Now, without me telling you where to stand, I'm giving you some responsibility here now. I'd like you to find everyone doing the same thing as you are with your thumbs. It might be right thumb on top, left thumb on top, maybe side by side. Maybe they're tucked in or you've got no thumbs at all. Find other people the same as you. Where are you guys? Over here. Lefties? Right. Broadies and over here? Wrong. The wrong side. <laughs> I think that would be left. Lefties over here. Is there any others? No others, like there's no side-by-sides, maybe tucked in, no, not today, that's okay. Or it might have been that you were like that, you could have been just like that there, uh, but you felt uncomfortable. Would well, it be very easy to quickly go, Ooh, okay, so now I can be with someone else, that's okay. But there are times when perhaps you, it's more difficult to lie. For example, I'd like you now to divide up according to the type of shoe you are wearing. Now I don't mean necessarily their brand name, it could be what they're made of, what you use them for, their colour, how many holes are in it, how much you spent on them. Find other people the same as you. <laughs> Type of shoe. <laughs> Running shoes, look out for these guys during the tag games over here. Trial. Yes, I was with you guys over here, over Metros. here. <laughs> what are they called? Metros. Metros, okay. Note that we're in three groups. Now if you're working with an exercise, the next one might mean that you need three groups. Actually, they're relatively even, but it may be that it never works out even for you. Then I'd say use the old scientific method to say, hey, you and you, over here. But what you've done is you've broken them up randomly. The same Monash University group I worked with back in February this year, there were three, let's call them Anglo boys for want of a better term, given there was a very strong foreign student population in this group of 80 or so. And for the first 10, 15 minutes, it was amazing the number of things these three boys had in common. You know, they were together the whole time. Clearly, not feeling comfortable here. And yet for my program objectives, that was never going to work. They needed to find a way to break out of that little click so they can start to actually get to know other people, which is the whole point of the program. So I then needed to find something they could no longer lie about because they could go, well, how many, how many, how many three? Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> they clearly that's not working, but I used the color of their top. They couldn't lie about that. It's like, mm, damn it, <laughs> different colors. They're gonna have to be in a different group. That was the first point where they were able to actually get to know somebody new. So that could be another reason why the categories can be used, is that you can deliberately break up those clicks. And before they know it, they're in a different group. Great. This group, you go over to that corner. This group, go over there. And off you go to go do whatever you need to do next. So it gives it a bit of fun. Compared to, or distinguish that, to the standard. What's the standard technique that is often used, I know it was when I was at school, to break a group, let's say, up. yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three. I don't know about you, but how could you ever police that Rowan was number two and blah, blah, blah. And it was always like me. I was like, way ahead of the teacher doing this. So I could be with who? My friends. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. But depending on your objectives of your program, that may not actually achieve the objective.